Good afternoon, my lovers. I'm in my garden. The weather is starting to improve. I think I could be out metal detecting real soon. But everybody's been asking me in Wales, oh, LIDAR, where do we find it? It's rubbish. But well, I found a site. I found a site that's quite good. Temperamental, but good. So I'm going to show you now how you get this LIDAR and how you can download it and do all sorts of wonderful things with Welsh LIDAR. I've had quite a few people say, oh, Welsh LIDAR, it's rubbish. Can't find anything in Wales for LIDAR. But I've got this site, I found this site. Now I've been using this site for a little while now, mostly for downloading LIDAR. So first of all, I'm gonna show you what this LIDAR looks like before I download it. And then we have to go through the temperamental, because it is very temperamental to download LIDAR from this site, um, way of trying to set it up on QGIS. So it says display in viewer. We'll click there and it should open um, this form of LIDAR. Um, did it work? No, it didn't work, it didn't work that time. I must have. <laughs> I've gone on to the wrong one. Um, yeah, I think I need to scroll down um, somewhere down here. Ah, here we go. Data this map is using three. So we got LiDAR one meter resolution and it was shot in 2022. We got DSM, DSM and DSM. Uh, DSM I think stands for LiDAR with trees. So we've got multi-directional heel shade. So we go with heel shade first of all. Uh, it should pop up, hopefully. It's loading, see the little circular thing going there, look. It's loading, ah, there we go. So now if we click display in viewer, it should pop up with a nice little picture of the LiDAR, and it does. So we'll just click that box there, and down here it says expand. So we can expand it and now we can zoom in on, uh, I think this was one meter resolution. Um, so you can see, you know, it's quite good. Zooming in, I uh, see so you can see the trees, look, trees. Now I have downloaded um, LiDAR without trees. So because it, this, the way they make the LiDAR, it can zoom through the trees and pick up the ground like the I don't know if it's the odd beam between the tree the leaves but it can zoom right in so so it's a pretty good LiDAR you know it's getting more and more um, cleaner um, you know it's always handy to see through the trees because you know this is a hollowed way in some there might be hollowed ways in some of these trees so uh, which is a kind of medieval road so you can zoom you know reasonably far in um, so that's not too bad, is it? So zoom back out on that one, and obviously you can move around. Got to give it time to load. Now, where is that uh, Roman fortress down here somewhere? Um, now, can we turn off the? Oh, what's going on there? No, don't want that. Layers. Ah, we can turn that off, right, okay. So just click the little eye thing here, it turns it off so you can find where you are first before you have to um, zoom in. So you are Carleon, which is a Roman fortress in here somewhere. Right, it's quite good that it shows you um, uh, contours as well. So Carleon, I think is here. Where is the, uh, there's the amphitheater. So if I turn it back on now, um, wait for it to load. There we go, it's loading. So this is the amphitheater, which is like um, their version of Wembley Stadium. And we can, you know, there's bits that we can see in there. The odd little line here. Now the problem with this is it's rather static, isn't it? It's static. So what I like to do is I like to download it. But before we do that, we'll just go back Um, go back again and this one here that multi-directional heel shade 
which is it's 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 a way of looking at lumps and bumps from different directions. So if we click on that one, um, is it going to load? Yeah, it did. So we can do the same again. Oh, who was that? Beans for breakfast. Um, so yeah, we can turn that off. So we go and look at Carlean again. Um, Kafili. Cumbran, I was in the TA, TA at Cumbran, um, and at Caffili, Caffili, um, Cardiff. Uh, where's it gone? Where's Carleon gone? Um, that's right there somewhere. There it is. So if we look again at the amphitheatre, there it is, look. So we put that back on. So this is now multi-directional. See, now this is giving you a bit more um, surface. You can see a bit more on the surface than you could do last time. Let's get rid of that and click full screen. So you can see a bit more in the way of bumps now than you could before. So the multi-directional one is probably the best. I'll put all the link to, to these in the description, this page. You have to scroll down to the bottom to get it. Um, you know, because they might update it at some point. So yeah, we got a car park here. Is that a car park? Possibly a car park. Is it loaded? Yeah. Um, not sure what that is. It's got a funny bank around the outside. Um, might be part of the Roman fortress for I know. See all these bumps. Yeah, that's you know, if you ever go, to, if you ever go metal detecting, you get a field and it got all these bumps, like you know, loads of un even ground surface area it usually means there's something there so we can zoom out you see it's loading quite slowly for some reason hopefully I've got too many pages open let's get rid of these two right now yeah, I might quicken it up right so uh, we we'll put back to display on map now over here you see these like three lines if you click there and then where it says export raster data um, it's kind of like the wrong thing to say really isn't it export it should say download raster data not export that, I, well, that got me quite confused that then so you click on export raster data then you click the little um, thing there little magnifying glass you get these drop down lists. So first of all, I'd write DTM because that you know gets rid of the trees. Uh, resolution. Um, now the problem with um, you know if you put it on 25 meter resolution uh, and you look for downloads, you get these like hundreds of these 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 things here. If we put it on say 50. Then you get loads of them. Now this is supposed to be ten kilometers grid, right? Ten kilometers grid. Maybe it's because I haven't given it a postcode address. But I'll go off and I'll go and get a postcode for an area somewhere in Wales, say Anglesey, a triangle C, and then we'll put the postcode in because it says here search location, and we'll get a postcode and we'll see if we can. You know, reduce all of these files because the this map. You know, what, another thing. Why can't you just download them all in one go rather than like all of them? See now, like I said, downloading this uh, lidar is temperamental to say the least. It, even downloading it's tricky. Trying to open it on QGIS is even more tricky. <laughs> So I'll go off and I'll find a nice postcode somewhere on Anglesey, and we'll see if we can then download the, um, the the data. Right, so I've got a postcode. I just went for the center of Anglesey. I'll put in the postcode and then just click enter on the keyboard, and then it comes up there something Bod Bod Ford with with two Ds or three Ds. Right, so there we are. So it's got an area right 
Uh, we'll just click that because that was doing the other one. Right, if we click it again, uh, export raster data, click the little magnifying glassy thing. Now, is it going to give me, because this, this is near the coast, and I've noticed near the coast tends to give you better, um, let me go with DTM, it tends to give you better resolutions. So you've got 25 centimeter. Is it giving me anything? No results found. Okay, not for 25. What about 50? Um, three results found. So we got it on ASC, not like TIFF files, which is just like a standard TIFF, it's a kind of standard thing. We got it on 10 kilometers, and it goes from 10 kilometers to 100 kilometers. Imagine the size of the download. If you wanted to download 100 kilometers, it would be massive. Anyway, I digress. So I'm going to just click on these because it says 50 centimeters. Now this won't cover the whole of the island, which is another thing. It doesn't give you any indication. You, know, you can't show what it's what it's doing. You know, am I doing this right? It's not showing me the amount of. See here, you've got the eye open for this one meter resolution DSM thing, but it's not showing me the amount of coverage for this download it's not so anyway so is i set it back to 10 kilometers 50 centimeters which is really good um dtm which means it can see through the trees um an asc so if i just click there see that shoot up it's downloaded the first there we go so what you got to do is save all these to a file i've noticed and then open the next one and save all of these again to the same file so you end up with a file with with hundreds of these you know six megabytes six megabytes five megabytes six point six megabytes so if you could imagine if you tried downloading a 100 square kilometer file it'd be huge <laughs> you'd need a supercomputer and uh, not many people have desktop pcs anymore it's only me because i'm a geek um, so, yeah, look, loads of files in there. So, I would have to download all of these to a file. So, I'm just going to go with the first one I've clicked for now. I'm just going to open this up in QGIS to see how temperamental, because it's you know it's it's pretty temperamental. It's it's pretty horrendous. Right. So I've downloaded them to a file. Here they are. Uh, edit. Select all. And here is oh, QGIS, and I'll just drag and drop it in there like that. Now, perhaps ASC files, perhaps there's a proper way of importing those files. So we've got to wait for a minute for it to all load up. And there you go. You see, so you've just got bits. And that's it. I think that was it. That's just the bits. So now I want a base map. Um, let's go with satellite. And the satellite doesn't appear. And you think, oh, why didn't the satellite appear? You know, Google Satellite should be here. Because normally you drag and drop this into the into the desktop, into the screen area, and the um, Google Satellite should appear. But it doesn't. So you've got all these question marks, and the question mark is because the CR as the projection, the grid reference, you know, because you've got all types of grid references, and not grid reference, um, the map layout, the way maps are laid out, there's, it's different to each country you go to. So you've got, it's all to do with the time zones and things. So it's pretty tricky. So what we'll do first of all is we'll try and um, we'll try and build virtual raster. This will merge all of these tiles. So we want to click here and we want to select all. We we'll just unclick the uh, satellite and we'll click run. And it should have um, merged all these tiles. And it did. Right, so now we can get rid of all of these. So if I click the top one, hold the shift key, drag it all the way to the bottom, 
click that one and we will remove layer okay so that gets rid of all those can we see the satellite now no we can't now the reason we can't see the satellite is because this is a different projection to the satellite projection so <laughs> what we're going to do it took me ages to try and figure this out I've got a question mark and that thing just means it's not been saved so you want to um, go with properties uh, it says source there see it says invalid projection so we've got to change that I think to the British National Grid okay apply and okay and it's disappeared so it's not that one <laughs> I there was another one so pro do it again properties so it's not British National Grid it's um, uh, uh, Persuado Merca, Mer, Mercader Pers, Persuado Pers, something I think it's that one apply okay it's not that one right <laughs> um, again um, let's try project ah it might be this one ah it's that one right so I've had to change the um, the time zone and these the best way to describe it so will the map appear now no it won't right so now it's got to be a def it's got to be a better way perhaps the CRS file that is a way of um, in importing it where it does properly work right so if I now export that I will export this to a file think yeah I think I export this to a file and then um, I save it in a file and then I bring it back into another um, project uh, QGIS project and I, th I think that worked last time I did that uh, <laughs> you can see how difficult it is it's um it's really tricky to understand how this works um, layer CRS you know CRS project CRS from layer what does that mean um, can I get the map on now no yeah oh I, I think what I did last time was I um, I save this to a file and then I bring in a map and then I drag and drop this back onto the uh, into the canvas so I will save this now and I will get back to you once I've done that. So now I've gone back to, I'm going to bring up a base map. Google Satellite, it should appear. Um, there we go. So we've got Satellite, we'll zoom into Angle C. There it is. And I'll go and grab. So now I've dragged it onto here. Let's just remove that, and you can't see anything. Right. So now we've got to change the projection again. Um, I think now we can change it to the British National Grid. Okay. Apply. Okay. And there it is. Huh. <laughs> it must be CRS. I might be a way of importing CRS without all this aggro so here's the spot that there it is projected over the landscape and then it's just a matter of um, properties uh, changing the symbology to hill shade we'll take that up to 20 change that thing to bilinear apply ok and there it is because now once you've downloaded this it's higher grade you know it's much higher grade it's sharper it's clearer you can zoom right in on it with the the, the, the projection that they had the map on their website it the more you zoomed in it got a bit blurry 
so now we've got um, see this that's obviously a lake so we take this off it's a lake buildings also tend to do that um, so yeah it's it's a nice clear up almost a town it's a nice clean and clear projection now I've noticed that there's not much in the way of one meter resolution downloads it's but the whole country is covered by two meter resolution now obviously you're not getting as clear a picture with um, uh, uh, with two meter resolution one is better 25 is, is fantastic um, but there's not much of that so I think this one was 50 was this one 50 centimeter possibly so this is 50 centimeter resolution so it's like super clear now if I put this onto my um, no not that one this one up here click um, slope double click just run it um, and it should turn this into this this is the slope algorithm yeah, close don't need that anymore and we've got the slope algorithm we go with properties and we'll reduce that to 10 apply okay uh, see now the slope algorithm is no is not visible either so now we have to go back to properties <laughs> We have to change the source, the projection to British National Grid. Ah, there we go. Now, slope is a lot like geophysics. It's the closest thing to geophysics, I think. So you can see an awful. You can almost see sub. You can almost see under the ground with slope. It's really good. So you can see all sorts of mining or whatever has been going on here um, you know it can it can it can virtually see this thing here what is that it looks at the very steep sides and a flat bit in the middle so if we turn that off you can see it looks like a bit of a hill and on satellite it is a bit of a bump so this landscape is covered in bumps um, slope back on you know you've got a nice rectangular rectangular um, rect rectilinear rectilinear <laughs> feature here could be something really epic uh, turn that off it's just a field let's put on a different base map we we'll go with Bing sometimes that shows up crop marks and sure enough we've got a faint crop mark here look so yeah, faint, and it goes off that way. Um, and there's another crop mark here. Look down through there, and a bit of a triangular thing. And there's some more crop marks here. The beauty of slope is that you can see something on the surface that looks really, you know, interesting. Um, like that so if we find say another one hopefully um, uh, there's a bit of ground disturbance in there we put on the bing and sure enough there is some crop marks in there not as clear as the last time we'll take that off um, the ground here is quite flat so it's it doesn't show up um, see so here look this is a perfect example of them not scanning a very thin strip imagine how many flight hours it takes to scan the ground so here we've got some ground uh, disturbance there we put the bing on and we've got something there something hmm it's probably just another bump 
Anyway, so um, it's not a very big um, DTM. This um, the ground disturbance there. Put Bing on, and I don't. I think I think this is bedrock. Yeah, this looks like bedrock. Oh, that's bedrock. Look, you can see these the striations, the scratches of when um, we had an ice age. And those lines are from rocks that were uh, jammed inside the ice. And gradually they were just sort of like scrapes across the surface like grating cheese, you know. So this, this is outcrops of bedrock. And it'd probably be very good for metal detecting actually because if you can see the bedrock there, then any artifacts are going to be like seriously shallow because they'll go down and stop on the bedrock. Like, you know, when when people go panning for gold, it, it just it stops on the bedrock. Can't go any deeper, obviously. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, a little bit of an estuary. Ooh, lovely looking sand. Um, so yeah, um, I will now try and uh, download now the bigger, the much bigger um, DTM. And I'll also look into this, is it the CRS. I'll, I'll see if there's a proper way of downloading a CRS file in QGIS. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Ah, it wasn't, um, uh, it was ASC and I did it the proper way and it didn't made no difference. So now I'm going to go with um, one meter resolution, right? So we can see how many tiles we got for, oh, come on, down. Uh, so we got these three. So I'm guessing that these three are a bigger area, maybe. Because it's got SH37, SH38, SH47, SH48. So I'm guessing it might, these three might be a bigger area. Right, so I will download these to a file and then I will drag and drop them into QGIS. Right, so I've downloaded and extracted every file into the same folder. So now I just drag and drop that in there and it should open. Yeah, it's doing it because the hand's the same there as it is up there. So it's it's doing things. Um, kind of slowly. Uh, I'll get back to you when it's finally done it. Right, it's finally done it, and as you can see, there's lots of tiles, but again, it's not complete coverage. This is one meter resolution. So I'm guessing they're probably doing it, but it's taking a long time for them to do it. Now, I'm not going to go into um, merging all this together um, because the two meter resolution pretty much covers the whole of the country. Uh, country? Yeah, Wales. Is it country? Yeah. Um, dev no, devolution. Now, if if they hadn't gone for devolution, then it would have been the same for England as it is for Wales, and they would have had a much better coverage, a nice one meter resolution. But they went for their devolution, so um, you know that's their problem. <laughs> but uh, <coughs> you know, should we have gone for Brexit? Oh, I'm getting to politics. So I avoid politics. But look, you can see it loading up. It's a big file, to say the least. Now, did it get my postcode? I wonder. <laughs> so, yeah, it's um, a pretty big file. Now, what I'm going to do from now on is all of my videos that I do like this, I'm going to put them on my Patreon page. So if you want to see me doing things like this I will put it I'll, I'll do the video and I'll put them on patreon all of my sort of geo referencing and then all of the uh, getting hold of all of the shape files and things like that you know because uh, I could do with some more patrons so yeah this is what I'm going to be doing from now on so I hope you enjoyed this video 
but it's like I said it's tricky because it's going to need these question marks look again so I'd have to merge all these tiles together and then go through that rigmarole of trying to work out what CRS that's the projection um, you should be using and then you have to kind of constantly sort of juggle it it's like juggling trying to get it to work it's not like this for England it's much simpler <laughs> so yeah there's the different um, types of things that you can do and it's it's worth looking through because we go back and then we scroll back to this go back again there are lots of other kinds of projections they do other things so this is just lidar is a data catalog um, see this one says maps um, rainfall average figures boundary information you can download boundary you can download historical boundaries I've downloaded historical boundaries you know, a bit like um, English hundred boundaries, um, and there's all sorts of interesting. So if I put in like up here and I tap in historic, and click search, and I unclick that, then we get uh, historic landfill sites. Um, digital aerial photography let's see what that does um, we are display on viewer and is it going to display whatever that is sorted by decade 1940s open group REF So I'm guessing you can just download the images. Um, there's all sorts of things it does. So it's worth looking into. Right, so this will conclude this video for now. And I will get back to you. The weather is actually starting to massively improve. Um, it's getting a bit warmer, so I might be metal detecting this week. Because the one time it was just piddling down with rain and then it went absolutely freezing cold and now I reckon this is the first day of spring. Cheers! <laughs>